All right. All right, family. Glory to God. We are back again. Another Systemic Gracism Godcast. Brother Rich, how are you doing, Pastor Knight? I'm heavenly seated and never defeated. How are you? Come on. I'm going to take one of yours. I'm distracted by eternity today, man. Come, Come on. on. <laughs> so it's a good day to be alive. You know what I mean? So I, I, I'm enjoying it, man. Good good to see your face again and, and have another opportunity to just talk about the things of the Lord, uh, to kind of share with the body, maybe help impact some life, open some eye to get some feedback to, you know, just fellowship with others through our conversation. So yeah. I'm looking forward to it today, man. We, we've been doing a really um, great series on the gifts of the spirit. I've been enjoying it, man. I, I, I've kind of gone back and watched them myself. I'm like, man, this is like this is like good reinforcements, you know. What I mean? So <laughs> this was some good reinforcements, man. You know, so I've been enjoying it. Um, and for anyone who's maybe tuning in for the first time, or you're coming back with us, we want to welcome you. We've been talking about the gifts of the spirits, brother, since since uh, a couple of weeks. Uh, here and we've been coming out of 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, just dealing with the diversity of them. So I'm looking forward to it today because today we're talking about the gift of faith. The gift of faith, you know? So I'm looking forward to that because that is such a powerful cornerstone word in, in the uh, walk with Christ, right? So I think this is going to be a really interesting one and I'm looking forward to it, you know? Yeah, so um, before we even jump into it, before we get into that, Rich, let me ask you this. We're talking about the gift of faith. Mm -hmm. You kind of set a foundation about maybe the difference between the gift of faith and the cornerstone of faith mm. that is spoken of, that, uh, that without faith. We can't please God without faith, right? right? And it's 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 not by works, but by our faith, you know. So the cornerstone of faith in Christ, our, our relationship with God through faith in Christ and the gift of faith. Give us a little, I'm gonna throw you a little alley oop, man. <laughs> you know, I know you can catch it, man. Talk, talk to us a little bit about that this morning, man. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> As we jump in today. <laughs> Hopefully it don't go out of bounds. Hallelujah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Great start. Uh, you know, thank you for, for having me. It's always an honor to serve with you. Love this stuff. We, um, the word faith appears in scripture roughly 400 times, you know, uh, depending upon your tra translation in yeah. NIV, you know, has about 460 times. King James has about 360, 70. So depending upon your translation, roughly 400 times the word faith is mentioned in your English translation of scripture. So, um, cornerstone word. Yeah. So the, Greek word that's used for, you know, uh, the just shall live by faith, you know, uh, the, uh, you know, you are saved by faith through grace, you know, or saved, saved by grace through faith, right? This thing that every man has, uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 13 says that every man has been given the measure of faith. Yes. That word faith uh, in the uh, Greek is metron. Gotcha. So metron is a uh, a weight that can be measured. You know, gotcha. Jesus said this, uh, oh, ye of little faith, right? And then yeah. he turns around to the Roman centurion. I haven't seen as much great faith. So faith is measurable. Faith is something that every man oh, has that yeah. can grow. You know, he turned to the woman with the issue of blood and says, your faith made, made you whole. Yours, yeah. Come Your on. faith made you whole. So there's something that every human being has. It's called the measure of faith. Now, this is different than the gift of faith mentioned in First Corinthians chapter 12. And this is where our, our study is, you know, in the series is the uh, the demonstration gifts or as uh, the, the Greek word charismos, you know, or charisma. Yeah. You know, this is where we get that word from, uh, you know. Because there in 1 Corinthians 12, it says that Holy Spirit selects as he wills to give the specific 
gifts. So we see that the gift of faith in 1 Corinthians 12 is different than the measure of faith, which is given to every man. Yeah. Come on. And see, I I was looking to that because a lot of times, if you don't touch on that, we can fuse these things together and find ourselves not operating properly with either one. That's good. Come on. You know what I mean? So that's the the first thing I kind of thought about just as we got on was like, let's kind of pull them apart so we can identify them so that when we're, when we're uh, addressing either one of them, we know which is which. Cause that's important. You know what I mean? Cause you, you gotta have the right kind of medicine um, for the right kind of situation or the right tool for the right scenario. Otherwise you find yourself banging your head against the concrete, you know, <laughs> <laughs> trying to, like, try to figure out. <laughs> What's what's going on with that? You know. Yeah, I mean? so. yeah, yeah. Because sometimes as Christians, we if if, if we don't understand the distinguishment, we'll yeah. accidentally give up on something we Come have on. in our possession. Come on, Rich. That's what yeah. I'm talking about. You know, it, it it's like we went through the grocery bag and we're like, well, I thought I had it, but I guess not. And it was there on the kitchen counter the whole time. The whole time. <laughs> and we're looking for something that we had the whole time. And, and we just say, well, maybe that's for somebody else. No, this is for you also. Yes. And, that, and that's it. And because you, you just said something that just kind of got me, Rich. This is the time to go find what was already left on your table. This is really a season to find what was left on your table. Don't just say, hi, I must have left it at the uh, grocery store and just disregard it. It's time for us to go back, look back, and you might have put it behind the milk and forgot about it, right? You might have left it on the counter behind the, uh, you know what I mean, behind one of the appliances, the blender. It's there. (laughs) So we're talking about picking it up today. And I like that you gave that that breakdown of the difference in the word because you're talking about the measurable type of faith. Because there's just, you know, it, it's something that can be quantified, right? Yeah. And that's what we see with the the the, the different individuals where, where, like you said, he told the woman, it's your faith that did that. Or even the centurion. The centurion understood Roman protocol of hierarchy, and that gave him a a, a, a like slide in. Right mm-hmm. into his measure of faith towards Christ, right? Yeah. But we're talking about this one today, and we're talking about something completely different. I was something different. looking at the word for this one, the word in Greek for the type of faith we're looking at today in Romans, I'm sorry, first Corinthians chapter 12 is pistis. Yeah. Pistis. Okay. So we're going to talk about that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read it and then we're gonna kind of jump in uh to it here. Uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to verse six. I'm not going to go all the way back to the beginning like we've done, but I'm just going to go back to about verse six and come up to verse nine. And then we're going to kind of jump into it and see what's on the plate today. All right. So this is King James Version, First uh, Corinthians chapter 12, dealing with the diversity of gifts, starting at verse six. And it says there, and there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. And we went over these in the previous two discussions. For one, it is given the spirit, the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge by the same spirit. And then today, verse 9, to another faith, or in Greek, pistis, or faith. We're talking about this different kind of faith that is on the table we're talking about. So to another faith by the same spirit. Uh, by the same spirit. So we're talking about this demonstration gift. How is faith a demonstration gift, Rich? How is word of wisdom, word of knowledge, those seem easier to grasp as demonstration. Give, Give those who are viewing, paint a picture you remember elementary, that guy who we'd watch on TV who would paint the picture as he was talking, right? Do you remember that guy? <laughs> and he, he had that soft voice. It's like, then Br'er Rabbit walked through the thicket. <laughs> and he's just drawing. I used to love that show, man. He's like drawing it in between. <laughs> paint a picture like that guy, Rich. Talk to me about how, how is this faith, uh, what is this gift and how, how is it a demonstration gift? 
Sure. Yeah. So what what sets us apart? Okay. Then the the faith that all of us are given. Or without, you know, uh, without faith, it is impossible to please God. You know, you please God by your acknowledgement of him, by your pursuit of him. You know, uh, faith without works is dead. That's the everyday faith stuff. This is an unusual manifestation of a divine assurance that what you're about to say or what you're about to enact, it will be completed like all of creation will back you up in this unusual blessed assurance moment. Yeah. It, there's a, um, I remember one time there was this guy who, uh, he's a pastor of a cowboy church here out, uh, out here in West Texas. I forgot his name, but one, one day he, he was on, on his way to Seminole and uh, it's a town, however many hundreds of miles away. And he was driving and he was running out of gas. And, yeah. uh, and mm-hmm. he was like, oh, man, I'm running out of gas. Dang it, Lord. You know, like I, I thought I was going to be able to make it, but, but I guess not. And he was another, you know, 40, 50 miles away, and he didn't make it. Yeah. And, and while he was praying, he said he felt this unusual assurance. If he puts his finger on the gas, like little hole thing there, yeah. God will fill it up with gas. Yeah. He just had this unusual measure of assurance. Yeah. If I do this thing, something miraculous will happen. Yeah. And so he he went and he did it. And sure enough, somehow, some way, the vapors turned into gas or something. Right. But it filled up with, with right. gas. And right. he and his gas tank re- registered full and it was it was like wow. a miracle. You yeah. know? And so yeah. this is a uh he he said that's the only time it's ever happened to him, you know, yeah. it was just this unusual moment of miraculous demonstration because of a this assurance from just this complete assurance. If I do what I'm what's in my mind right now, it will happen miraculously. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. That see that that's powerful. And I think that is that's really a, a great example because we read these things. Uh, as believers who are in our word, we read these things uh, so often. We read about uh, the widow with a little bit of oil left, right? A little bit of oil, a little bit of oil, a little bit of flour. Uh, and God sends Elijah to her, and there's a whole multiplication deal that goes on there. Yeah. We read about five loaves of bread and two fish. And once again, uh, through this kind of special uh, faith and participation of disciples, we see this. And I think just sharing that example is helping us find that, that, that grocery that we need, that one of those ingredients that's a part of some people's dish today that was behind the blender. Somewhere on the counter, we find it behind the eggs and the milk because we have to begin to contemplate is this still happening today? If God is the same yesterday, uh, tomorrow, and today, is this something that's still available uh, to us now? Because I'm thinking about this, Rich. We don't know how much faith we exhibit in general on a daily basis, right? Think about that. I just recently came from D.C. When you get on an airplane, you're putting your life in someone's hands. When you get on the interstate and drive, <laughs> you're putting, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm gonna give you another example for everyone watching this, not, not to gross you out, but you have to really think about this, right? Not to gross you out. But anytime you go to a restaurant, you don't know who these people are. <laughs> Unless it's your family's restaurant, you, you know. <laughs> you, they listen, listen, Rich, I'm gonna get off of this. I don't know why the Lord has been. <laughs> Do you remember Okay, so it, people out there watching, now during the uh, shutdown in the pandemic, we were masked up, gloved up, six feet apart, and the Chick-fil-A lines was still full. And, and one day it just hit me in the head, I'm like, how are we doing all this as though we know what they're doing back there over this chicken? <laughs> you know? So it's just, but yet my point is we have faith, right? We're like, I want the waffle fries or the burger. And we have no clue, unless it's our family, who's back there, 
but we're placing, we're, we're accessing and utilizing in general a ton of faith every day. Yeah. So why not take some time with what you're sharing and use an example to kind of delve into uh, this, this, this reality. So I, I, I'm grateful for that example. I wanted to share that because we got a lot of faith, a lot more faith than we know. It just may be that we haven't transmuted it and translated the currency of, her, of it over into the kingdom. Yeah. You know, um, a lot, a lot of these demonstration gifts, if you hang around in the kingdom long enough, yeah. you'll experience these, you know, you know, you know, yourself. And so, yeah. uh, you know, I know you and I, we've experienced, you know, all, all these gifts, you know, at various times in our life as Holy Spirit wills. And there's something about the alignment of the protocol of how things ought to be that yeah. these gifts of faith come in these moments where Holy Spirit, if, if you have Holy Spirit with you, you have access to all these gifts, right? Yes. And, yes. you know, he determines the timing and the fact yes. that it's called a gift it's not a reward. You can't earn it. You can't fast yeah. enough for it. You can't. Yeah. This is something that you're in cooperation with heaven. Yeah. And those who live a solid Christian life, yeah. you keep yourself open and accessible to these at all times. Come on. A, a Christian that's all the time backsliding or repentance and living worldly, repentance, yeah. living worldly, you know, you don't avail yourself for these because you, uh, in order for heaven to be, uh, on schedule and fulfilled yes. in this moment, let's say there's this moment of lack, like that preacher that had to be there, or these people had to be fed, you know, yeah. and, and the little boy, you know, and the, the fishes and loaves and all this, you know, and this, the faith, like Jesus knew that as you guys pray over this, as you bless this, it bless will multiply, on. you know, on. and so uh, when Peter, he's like, if that's you, Lord, I'll get out of this boat and walk on water with you. Yeah. And then the Lord said, come. And Peter just knew. Yeah. He had this assurance. It's the Lord. Here I go. And the yeah. illogical, you know, he, it surpasses the illogical, this divine assurance that comes over. Now, this isn't your everyday thing that you just, yeah, yeah I think I'll walk on water today. <laughs> I trust like the it. Lord, you know, that right. this is the different thing. This is a specific moment of heavenly protocol has to be fulfilled. And so there's a participant of a human that's in the things of the Lord. You know, uh, yeah. G Jesus said that the Holy Spirit is not given to those who don't believe. It's not given to the world, but it's given to you who believe John chapter 14. So, so if we stay in relationship with Christ, we have greater opportunity to experience these things ourselves. Yeah. So this gift of faith Every now and then you'll find yourself in a moment that third dimensional reality says this, but all of a sudden the spirit of the Lord comes over you with this divine assurance of, no, if I say this thing, or if I believe this way, or if I pray this way, or if I lay my hands this way, or if I, yeah. whatever it is you feel like in that moment, you connect with that opportunity yeah. of obedience there's this guy, Brad, uh, Brad Fluke. He's a preacher. And, um, uh, yeah, you know, we, we hear of Smith Wigglesworth where he would, yeah. you know, punch people in the stomach and stuff right, like that. And right. I'd never quite got all that, you know, it's like, well, <laughs> all right, yeah. well, if it works for them, okay. Yeah. You know, I, I've never had the Lord tell me, you know, yeah. you know, round house, this guy in prayer. DDT, and, DDT yeah, is DDT. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Lex Luger leg lock or something on him, you know, and you know, yeah, <laughs> the right. Ric Flair, woo, you know, right. So, um, I was, uh, this is at the Church of Grace and Peace in New Jersey, and I'll never for forget this. I was the usher assigned to the guest speaker that night, and his name was Brad Fluke. He, he's a minister out of Dallas, Texas, and he was praying, you know, I ain't kidding. He was praying, and this guy had come up for prayer for, for his shoulder. He he couldn't move his shoulder, and it atrophied some injuries. Yeah. A big guy, so you, yeah. so you could tell that that he was hard work and he was doing something. Yeah. And he um and Brad was praying, 
and of course me being young and on fire for the Lord, I'm studying all these guest ministers, yeah, study them. Yeah. How does he do it? How did he stand this way? Is there a greater faith if you stand this way or this way? You know, you know, you yeah. think that different things as a young yeah, man. You're trying to get the, the formula Lord. down, right? <laughs> trying to get down because I want to move in the miraculous too, you know? There you go. <laughs> and so I'm watching him. He's praying. And this weird look comes over his face, Jamil. Yeah. He's thinking something. And then straight up, he looks over at the pastoral staff. Yeah. He looks in this weird contemplative moment. Yeah. And then he looks back at the guy. And then he says these words. Well, I'm just going to do what I see the Lord doing right now. Ooh. And he karate chops this guy's neck, shoulder area, right? Yeah. Yeah. He goes, yeah, pow, yeah, and hits him like that. And yeah. everybody, even myself, I'm like, what the heck? What is he doing? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And the yeah. wife and the husband, you know, of the, the guy that's getting prayer, that he's like, oh, yeah, I'm healed. Wow. I'm healed. Yeah. And now, of course, Brad never got invited back, you know. <laughs> I don't know how that all worked, you know, with the staff or if it was well, some other reason, but that well, always stuck out. And then notice that after that moment, he never got invited back to speak, but the miracle yeah. happened, you know, and yeah. it always stood out like, wow, like, and so that makes me wonder, like, because he, he knew he was about to do something that wasn't logical that wasn't going to fit everybody's cup of tea but he had to do what he saw whatever god was showing him he had this divine assurance that if i do this thing as illogical it might be the miracle will happen come on rich and i'm gonna tell you what i just heard from that because you just said so much but i want to say this out there off of what you just said with that from pastor uh, mark flute that just because you're not invited back by man does not revoke the continual invitation of God when you're obedient. Amen. I want Amen. to say that. And, and the reason I want to say that is because oftentimes this extraordinary level of faith is not common. Right. It's not common. It's not typical. It doesn't fit within the box because as you were speaking, and then we're going to digress back to some more you were saying, because you got a lot of good nuggets in there. Think about this. Here's a question I always had. Mm -hmm. When Peter asked the Lord, if that's you, bid me to walk on the water, and they saw him stepping out, my question, Rich, is how come the other disciples didn't step out behind come him? Come on. Nobody come else on. said, how about me? Nobody, you know, nobody right? else said, why not? They, why was Thomas and Judas and Matthew like, well, how about us too? And, and what the Lord spoke to me, and this is just yesterday. I wasn't even mm. thinking about today, Rich. Mm. But the Lord was like, when you're operating in faith, there is a place between me and you that is so challenging and bold that nobody else will dare risk it. And that's the mm. one for you that will leave a record. Because when Mark Flute chopped that man, he never got invited back, but nobody ever forgot it. They right. never forgot the Jesus that, that, that authorized that miracle to flow through him. So I, I wanna just kind of emphasize that, uh, that what will be present oftentimes with this special type of faith is also fear. Because when they mm. saw the disciples were in the boat, mm. they thought Jesus mm. was a ghost. Yeah. Yeah, they were terrified. Yeah. So special faith often is in the same environment of terror and fear mm. of what's of what's about to come. Mm. So I, I wanted to share that with what what you were saying, because that that rose in me so strong, because I believe many uh, followers of Christ, they sense that spidey, like use the comic book reference, that spidey feeling, the spidey sense of it showing up. But sometimes we don't know what it is. So we're like, we, we uh, rationalize it out. We press it back down. But sometimes when we get the context of what we're saying today, that's what it is. And the fear doesn't mean that it's not faith rising up. It's just letting you know they're, they're related to one another. Special faith grows in the atmosphere or the ground, atmosphere of fear. You know, what I mean? mm. uh, so something I wanted to share for someone who may experience this shortly after viewing this, 
in a in a different way or or uh, something like that that you know it's not it's not alien to have some like oh I'm just gonna do what the Lord said you better believe Pastor Mark was like I don't know how this is gonna play out <laughs> yeah um, and quick uh, re re revision real quick his name is Brad. Brad, I'm Brad, sorry. Brad I'm saying, Luke, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'll that's throw okay. That out. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. It was still four mark. letters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm thinking about the book of Mark. I'm sorry. The book of Mark, yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, Brad, thank you for that. Yeah, 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 no, no worries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, so uh, remember the widow, you, you know, you know, yes. if we t touch back on the widow, yeah. Elijah, Yeah. if you do this, this will happen. Yes. Even though she was just like, all right, I'll just do whatever, you know. All right. Yeah. If that's what you say, it wasn't the the revealing, the moment of the gifting of faith wasn't for her. Come on. He had it, you know. Yes. Jesus, he um, uh, you know, whenever water turned to wine. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Mary said, whatever he says, do it, and it will happen. Come on. Whatever he says, just do it. And and moving in this kind of demonstration of faith, it, yeah. you know, as as you said, there is that atmosphere of fear of like, oh, what if? Da, da, da. No, yeah. you stay locked in. Uh, Romans chapter ten says that faith comes by hearing, hearing of the word of God. Come on, there we go. So faith is different than presumption. Yeah. Oh, come on, come on, Rich. Presumption says, hey, this is a good idea. I think yeah. I'll try it and see if it works. That's birthed out of the realm of the soul. Come on. Faith cometh by hearing. Well, hearing what? The, the, the opening of that moment. Where does that come from? By the word of the Lord. You see, come the on. word of the Lord is the substance that creates reality. And yes. so in order for you to see the miracle moment of reality change in yes. this gift of faith moment, what happens is his word has to be present first for us to obey in. Come on. Come on, Rich. I love that. I want to read this from a different uh, translation. And I yep. just come across this translation of that Romans 10, 17 you're speaking yep. about. Yep, yep, yep. Tie in what you're talking about. This is... Uh, called a passion tra translation. I don't know if you ever heard of it. Someone just told me about it. I just yeah. learned Brian. about it. Brian, yeah. Yeah, so like three weeks ago. But anyways, it ties in more Englishy, right? American Englishy, what you just said. Listen to this, uh, everyone. It says, faith then is birth in a heart that responds to God's anointed utterance of the anointed one. So when it's talking about hearing, like you said, it's not just I heard you, right? Because sometimes your spouse can be saying something, you hear them, but you weren't listening. Your children can say something, you hear them, but you're not listening. Your coworkers or your boss or your employee yeah. heard what you said. They weren't listening, though, right? That That's happens, good. right? I'm not yeah. the only one, right? <laughs> I know I'm not the only one. <laughs> but this is talking about a response. So it's, it's responding to what you hear out of the heart. So I, I just wanted to share that because it's not just some broad nebulous broadcast but it's something we hear and the other thing you said this ties in doesn't mean i understand it mm. that's the that's the important part i want to share too doesn't mean i understand it doesn't mean i know how it's going to play out doesn't mean I it's going to get me a raise or better influence in, in the ministry circle or more friends or it doesn't mean any of that it just means I've heard it and I, my heart is posture where I'm going to respond to it. So, I, 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 yeah, I wanted to share that on what you said, Rich, because this is an abnormal type of uh, faith. So that, that's yep. awesome, man. Yeah, that's awesome. That is awesome. Um, the other thing you mentioned I want to go back to, too, is this, Rich, because this is something else the Lord has been. Um, thank you, God, that you've given a flow into this because we just talking but. I like what you said too, Rich. We got to make sure we are still qualified to be in the race. Because mm. a lot of times, a lot of like backsliding or filling ourselves, sometimes we can be unintentionally over intoxicated with things of the world. Yeah. And that's different for everyone, right? So, so right. what, so for, for, for like myself, it may be music. For, for someone else, it may be TV. For some, we have to know how to remain qualified 
even just within our own consciousness, because sometimes things that are not even necessarily bad, we can have too much in it in us. And then when we this type of faith rises, our own thoughts are disqualifying us because of what we filled our life with. And that can be from just what we think is neutral, nebulous world stuff to actual sin. So that's something else that's often important because we don't want to damage our filtering system to be able to discern when this faith is rising. So I wanted to share that too. Let's be, we have to constantly check ourselves and make sure we are qualified to, re to receive these gifts, recognize these gifts, unwrap them, and then put the battery, you know, when you get your kids the, the remote control car, they got to be able to recognize it, then understand and put the battery in so they can start playing with it and work it, you know? So yeah. remaining qualified is the other big thing I heard you say, Rich, because there's a lot of times we can neutralize ourselves through uh, lukewarmianity. Lukewarm, mm, yeah. you know, get out of lukewarmianity because uh, a lot of times we just can't discern and filter properly what's rising within us. Yeah, yeah. Um, in line with what you're saying, Mark chapter four uh, wow. gives the parable of the sower and the seed. Come on. And Come on. some seed fell on stony ground, which the yeah. you know you know mm -hmm. the birds came and took it up. And then the second group, you know, it fell on shallow soil, and the yeah. afflictions, you know, dealt with the plant, and the plant was withered away, you know, because Come affliction, on. the sun, heat. But the third group is the most um, most unique situation out of all four. The four is the good fruit, right? Yeah. The third one is the most unique because the birds can take it away. Yeah. It grew and it established, yes. but it didn't grow fruit because mm. the thorns mm. and the weeds around it was mm. sucking out the life source. Or to grow fruit. And, and I think this is uh, an echo with what you're saying in line with what you're saying yeah. is that Jesus t tells us that the cares of this life, because when you read the yeah. interpretation, he said that these thorns and these weeds yeah. that choke it out from growing fruit, it didn't die. It still remained. Yeah. I mean, you still might be going to church. You still might yeah. crack open the Bible from time to time, but you yeah. wonder, where's the fruit? Come on. Where is God demonstrating things in my life? Come on, and man. he said, this is the group that they have the word, yes. but it's being choked out from the cares of this life and other things. Come on. Come on. And so the lukewarmianity, as you, you know, would quote it, it just oh, yeah. Pat, Pat, it Pat, yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's a new one today. Wear a t-shirt. Right. <laughs> Ex Luke Warmianis. <laughs> but go ahead, Rich. <laughs> yeah, amen. Amen. yeah. So, so, uh, so, what can disqualify us sometimes is just being so intoxicated with the yes. cares of this life, yes. and uh, and we're like, well, how come God doesn't use me in these things? You know, and it's like, well, maybe we put too much of a importance on what that social media feed has to say, or maybe on, we put man. too much importance on what these little events that give me that endorphin high, but it's, it's inferior to kingdom that's opportunity. That's it. Come on. That's right. Uh, another one is uh, the death of comparison. Mm. Okay. Uh, and I mean that by saying sometimes we get, and you, I think the trigger that for me is the, when you talk about social media, the studies now show that how like on young girls, Oh, One of the yeah. negative effects it has on our young girls is that they're constantly looking at different images of women and comparing themselves. And that existed well before uh, social media, right? Uh, yeah. But that's another way to care the world can get through us. Even in, uh, in the kingdom, we can compare one's ministry to another. Did I, is my yeah. church as big? Do I have, did I get as many people saved? Do I have a, a, as powerful a word of knowledge or word of wisdom? Uh, or, or, you know what I mean? Is our stuff getting out there as far? Anything like that, you know, do, do, do people pass out when I walk past them? And why didn't, why did they do it? Why do people fall out for that, that, that minister lady and not me, right? Uh, so uh, those concerns, um, kind of comparing ourselves is a worldly affair is what I'm saying. So yeah. just being uh, careful of that.
Yeah, I want to dovetail a, a quote I recently saw of, of A.W. Tozer. He yeah. said, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the Christian author, A.W. Tozer, he once said, um, modern religion emphasizes filling churches with people. Pure gospel emphasizes filling people with God. Oh, come on. That's it. That's it. Now, that, that's enough said right there, Rich, because that's when you're really operating. Yeah. I love that. That, that reminds me of Noah, preached 120 years, only eight people saved. Only By eight. modern day, they'll say, you are a failed <laughs> preacher. You, this, this boat should have been filled up. You had a hundred years plus, and this is all plus, you did. All you got, just your family. But now, right, we struggle to get our family, but we can win people. So we got to just look at, you know what I mean? We've got to look at the quality and not the quantity of the thing, the feeling of the people with God. I love that. I love that, Rich. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I wanted to just, uh, I wanted to talk about this a little bit, too with faith, Rich, give, give me just some more examples of this. And I might share, might share yeah. some come up to me as well, but give me, it's 1017, man. We just passed 1017 on Eastern time. That wrote, remind me of remote Romans 1017. So I just saw that. Oh, that's good. That scripture. All right, yeah, but yeah, talk to <laughs> Look at you, Mr. Prophetic Steer. Hey Hallelujah. man, I looked down, it was 1017. <laughs> oh, and it's April 17th, 17. So it might be something about that. But anyways. There uh, you go. There yeah, talk to me. Uh, talk to me, Rich, yeah. about any other examples from yeah, sure. So, so let's use uh, some of our own examples. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. One that I remember that that the Lord used you in in my yeah. life. There was this moment where um, my car had got impounded. I had just moved up to Jersey from South Carolina, and I remember. Uh, getting, uh, I was on my way to work and the local police had impounded the car because I'd, you know, I've been there for past 30 days or whatever. And the cops, you know, they're, they're doing their job. There's a, there's an out of state license plate here for more than well enough time. He should have already changed over his license, changed over his plates and all that. And they're doing their job. I can't get mad at them for enforcing the, the law. Right. And so was it a negative moment for me? Yep. Uh, but it didn't take, you know, my God by surprise. And so I remember praying in that moment, I'm there on the side of the road and the car's getting towed, towed away. And I was like, Lord. And I just remember, I just, the presence of the Lord came over me and I knew I had a choice alignment of words in this brief moment, this presence of the Lord came over me and whatever I'm about to pray will come to pass. It was different than just me going to my prayer closet. It was different. This unusual manifestation of God's presence came over me. Yeah. And I just knew there's something about what I'm about to pray. It will happen if I just yeah. verbally say these words with this third dimension with with my tongue out loud. Yeah. And I prayed a prayer. I was like, Lord, you will pay this. You will. I forgot the exact words I prayed, but I just knew that, that w when I prayed the prayer, that God is going to give me the money to get this out of impound. Yeah. I'll, you know, and I just knew that it's yeah. not going to sit there. Yeah. It's coming back to me in Jesus yeah. name, you know, and I prayed a prayer. And then ironically enough, that day you were at a Bible study yeah, because because it was a few days later, I got a check in the mail for the exact amount to get it out of the impound. You had sent me a check yeah. and it was down to the exact cent. Yeah. It was like something, something and 57 cents or 17 cents yeah. or whatever it yeah. was. It was down to the exact cent of what yeah. it cost me to get the car out, to get the license renewed, you know, the you know, the you know, the the little tag on it and all that stuff, you know, and. And what happens, you so so I called you. I was like, dude, you're not gonna believe this. Like, thank you for sending the check. What in the world happened? You know, and you said, Well, just the Lord had told me, you know, had put on your heart to take up an offering that night. And yeah. and so and so you did, and then you sent it to me. It was the exact amount to get yeah. the car out of impound. Come on, Rich. Yeah. Now I, let's so let's talk about that one because this 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 kind of unusual faith 
there are sometimes these unique participatory aspects of it. Because on my side, right, I had never asked for an offering before. And, and, and to this day, I'm still not strong with that, right? I'm not, I'm not strong with that. I, I'm, not, I'm not, not very strong with it. But I think when we communicated, it, 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 it was there for me is all I can describe. It was there for me to do it, even though I had never done it. And I was like, well, I felt like this is gonna work. And, and, and the, the, I want to talk about this from the perspective of when the Lord raises this type of faith up, like you said, it's not for like, you know, just to entertain yourself, right? <laughs> it's not in scenarios where you got like a super rich brother or sister who's just going to throw it to you. It's for a need to reveal his glory. So there's always uh, this his presence dominates above your logic above your calculations and above your foreseeing ability intellectually. So on my side, I was like, well, I've never done this before, but when you when we spoke, it rose up and it was like, this will work. And I was like, okay, God, I don't know how it's gonna work, but I'm gonna, we're gonna do this, right? And uh, so I, I raised that offering and everybody was like, well, who was this for? It's for my friend. They were like, who is he? A guy in New Jersey. <laughs> I said, this, this is a minister of the gospel in New Jersey. They're like, okay. And they just said, okay. They were just like, okay. And because you know, we had never done this in that Bible study setting either, but God had already set the cast and the scene from New Jersey to South Carolina. And he had also set up the banking so that the right of not one penny less, right. not one penny more. I didn't have anything to go to McDonald's with later <laughs> to embezzle. I didn't have any blessing to embezzle or or any for anyone to have to make up, right? So there's a there's sometimes this kind of cool participatory thing. So I think that that's a great example because it was something I had never done before. It wasn't something I was used to. It was in an environment where it had never been done. But the Lord set the scene up. The cat he had already set the cast up. And he had already set the financing up in that room for it to occur in a certain way. So when you said that, when it got to you, I was like, man, God is in control. He, he's, the fi he's the financer, right? He's the director of this show. Yeah. He is the uh, calendar maker. So I was like, That's, what else do we need to say? And I was like, now I, that just put a uh, edge something in me. God can do it if he if that's what he wants to do, he can and he will do it. So I, I love that. I still remember that. I still remember that. So that 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 is a that's an awesome one, man. And I I think the people of God need to know this is still there. It is. It is. This is still there. And I, I want to share with someone, yeah. I, someone watching this, right? You're taking some of your God-seeded ideas and you're telling them to people who are vultures. They're seed stealers. Mm. Mm. There are some people who operate in this gift that you need to be talking to as opposed to just shopping your idea around for affirmation and confirmation about what God has to say. Because mm. some people just want to steal your seed, your seed. Some people just want to intellectualize over it or doubt your seed. But there are some people who have a special gift for this type of faith who can release a word or just release a piece to you about what you're trying to do. Ask the Lord to give you discernment about who to share your dreams with. Because too often we give some of the things God's confirmed to us, vision that he's given to us, and we shop it around to blind people. Stop shopping your vision to blind people. There are those with this special gift of faith who he's been nudging you to. Just why don't you have a conversation with them after you talk to God, have a conversation with this one person. And they are the one who can help you uh, begin to take that seed and grow a garden that will not only bless you, but bless uh, some other people as well. So I just wanted to uh, just share that, uh, Rich, because look, when we communicated, which you have done so many times, it was because we had people who would cover and protect and cherish whatever we were sharing. So I don't know why I'm on this, but I wanted to say that the kingdom works like that. Have people who
who will share in the faith of what you're having faith for. Stop having conversations with those who don't believe or believe on a different page than you. I just wanted to really get that out because there's so many times when I probably was even on the edge of tears about something and I didn't have anybody to share and I had to call you up and he was like, I hear you, just I hear you. It wasn't, here's the answer, let me, Jamil, let me tell you every time how to fix it, but it was someone who I knew whose faith was in God and had a genuine concern for my own life. Uh, and, and that was the release I need to make it through certain storms. Storms were calmed off you saying, I hear you, Jamil, I hear what you're saying. I'll pray for you on that. And storms started to cease because I spoke to the right kingdom people, Come on. right? Come so on. anyhow, Rich, I'm all the way off on what we talking about. Yeah, that's good. That's <laughs> but, good. But uh, I, I just wanted to share that off, off of what you shared, man, because this is this is so big. And that, that, was, a, that was a great example as well. Amen. Yeah, yeah. speaking of um, praying with people, I remember one time uh, back in 2000, um, I'm going to say 2003, 2002 time frame, yeah. whatever, maybe, um, yeah, 2001-ish. Um, I, I was going through this book called The Gifts and Ministries of Holy Spirit by Lester Summerall. I think we've yeah. talked about it here before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, and I have it to be in a season of of that week of when going through that on the gift of faith. I was like, Lord, like, oh, I, 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 I want to move in that, you know, like, I, you know, I want to know that I've, I've I moved in it and stuff and and just kind of believing God for it and praying for it and stuff. You know, the scripture says, be zealous for spiritual gifts. So here I am. I'm going after it, Lord. I'm, yeah. I'm praying for yeah. this. I'm believing for this, please, Lord. Yeah. And um, and a friend of mine named Autumn from Texas had called. And uh, we were chit chatting, you know, and she's like, you know, yeah, yeah, I need some prayer, you know, just, you know, I, I can't talk much, but, you know, pray for, for me, you know, uh, put, put me on the prayer list. We got yeah. bronchial pneumonia, you know, and her voice was all, uh, you know, and she couldn't really talk. And if yeah. you've ever had like strep throat or bronchial yeah. pneumonia, it's just, it's, it's not comfortable. It's not right. good. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it affects uh, breathing, it affects uh, pain, nice. I mean, just everything. It's horrible. Yeah. And so I'm like, yeah, well, let's pray now. And all of a sudden, this divine assurance came over that before I get done praying, she's going to be healed. Yeah. I just knew that I knew that I knew. Yeah. It wasn't, hey, let's, you know, the scripture says if any two of you get other right. in it. No, it wasn't that kind of faith. Yeah. It was this unusual divine yes. assurance. The presence of Holy Spirit came over me, yeah. and I just understood that if I pray right now for her, she will be healed. Yeah. Like, there's no bones about it. Like, I just knew that I knew that I knew. It was this unusual divine assurance that came over me. And so I was like, God's going to heal you right now. Yeah. And I started praying, and sure enough, just that a simple 45 se second prayer. And yeah. she's like, well, thank you. And then, and then she's like, huh, <clears throat> huh. And then her, wow. her voice changed instantly. It lifted off of her Come on. instantly Come on. healed of what weeks of antibiotics, yeah. you know, Come all on. the medicine, all the doctors, yes. all that stuff. Yes. In one moment, in one moment of demonstration of the gift of faith, uh, a healing miracle took place in that young woman's, you know, whole respiratory area. Come on. I love that, Ridge. And you said something key in that powerful demonstration of that story. There's an assurance that falls on you. There is. That's what I heard. Y'all who are watching this, watch out, be sensitive for that assurance, that assurance that surpasses understanding. There's, so, there's an assurance that sometimes surpasses your logical understanding and you're able to engage it uh, as though you and God is the only thing that exists, wow. you know? And I want to say that that's powerful because it deposits something of, of, of Jesus into that person that they can't get rid of, mm. right? So, so, so that's powerful and we have to be willing to be in that position. And a lot of times we get greasy from that kind of anointing from someone doing it for us the grease gets on us from someone from someone else i remember i was about 2002 i was about 22 
and uh, I had gotten, uh, what's that disease they call it, a kissing disease? Mono. 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 I've gotten mono. Who you been I, kissing, brother? I said, everybody, man. Everybody. And I was, I was so single, it was hurting at this point. <laughs> I was like, I ain't even got nowhere, nowhere close enough nobody to kiss, right? So all my family kept saying, Jamil, who you been kissing, man? I was like, nobody. Maybe a water fountain. That's, that's, that's water fountain was about as close as I might have got. And I got it, and I remember going to the hospital. Uh, mono, uh, first of all, too, is horrible. The reason you triggered that in me is you're talking about the, you know, the, the throat issue. That's what mono did, shut my throat up. It made me a week where I could I could barely get out of bed. The, I went to the doctor's office and they said um, I was at Midlands Tech here in Columbia, South Carolina at the time. And they said you're, you're not going to be able to finish this semester because you'll probably be down two to three months minimal. And I was like, oh man, I'm going to lose you know lose all my uh, tuition. It's it's a waste and all that. Anyhow, fast forward with that. Out of everyone who's asked me who you've been kissing and everything, I spoke with my grandmother. And she was like, she's called, she's still alive. She's 90, 94. She'll call me Mill. She was like, Mill, you going to be all right. I remember this. She said, I'm going to pray for you. And in about a period of about two days, I could feel it. Some of you kingdom people have felt someone praying for you. They, not someone who just said it, but someone who had over 60 years of being on their knees, a callous knee anointing, right? Who's been on their knees for real, I could feel it. And about on the third or fourth day, it was gone. Something that was supposed to cause me to lose a whole semester of work. I went back to that semester. I did so well on my grades. They, I didn't even take the exams, right? That was the only semester that happened. <laughs> but my point is, I knew that, I know my grandmother was not the only one praying for me. I knew that. But I felt her prayer. I never even told her this. Thank you, Grandma. You ever see this. Thank you for being, being obedient. But it happened, and I went back to the hospital, okay, for all you believers in different sects that are uh, afraid of the hospitals, it's okay. You can let them check you out. Don't go back still <laughs> contagious, okay? Some of y'all just think about that. But I went back to the hospital and uh, Rich, they took my blood, right? They said, there's no trace of mono that was in your blood three days ago. Uh, I believe the grease, the oil, you know you're messing with a car, that oil gets on you right? Yeah. Or you're cooking, yeah. it gets on you, right? Yeah. The oil from that got on me, you know? Yeah. I thank yeah. God for how he uses people to, to, to anoint you, to, to, Amen. To, to allow it to bleed off onto you, you know what I mean? Because that experience yeah. impacted me since then. I was like, what the world? You know what I mean? They said it was no trace of it in my blood. So I wanted to share that yeah. because just like you were there for that young lady, it was my grandmother that was there and bled some of that off onto me to expand my faith and make me a little more sensitive so that when that assurance comes up and everything in my five senses says, this don't make no sense, I was a little more open to it, you know? It's good. Yeah. Yeah, man. man this, this has been a good one, which we've been on here almost an hour already, bro. Yeah. You know, I wanted to uh, just kind of change the gear a little bit as we begin to close it out to just see if there's anything you want to leave anyone with. We've gone through some really good nuggets, man. So I'm thankful for the flow of how this moved today. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm good. Gotcha. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, man. I've, I've enjoyed this. I enjoyed just kingdom discussion. Um, this stuff reinforces me. It helps root me even better. Yeah. You brought that example about from the past and, the, uh, you know, uh, Pastor Brad. I mean, this is, you know, we've talked about this in the scriptures. This has been a, a really good thing. And I hope that for someone out there, you recognize that this has been there for you. 
right? Some of you, it's been there. You, some of you, you've been doing this and you didn't even know it. Some of you, you've yeah. been doing it for other people. There are intercessors who walk in these things uh, and we don't even know it. There's grandmothers who have literally been having two loaves of bread and two fish and feeding 30 members of family and nobody knows how it's done. And, and there'll never be a movie about it, Rich. There'll never be right. a book about Come it on. that they've been operating Come in. On. Uh, uncles and ministers who've been walking mm. in this. And some of you right now, you've been walking in this or it's been available to you. And my prayer is mm. that you step off even deeper into it. I want to say yeah. this. I'm praying for a Peter type anointing revelation. Peter was not afraid to get out of the boat that everybody else wanted to remain in. Yeah. When you feel this assurance, oftentimes you are willing to get out of the boat, to shake the boat and step out of a boat that nobody else is daring or daring or willing enough to have to walk in the level of assurance from this faith rising. So I wanted to just say that to someone. Uh, I'm praying for that Peter revelation and anointing that when you you feel this and you sense this and you know mm -hmm. that you know that it's him, that you are willing to say, hey, if it's you, let me step out and let this water solidify under my feet. Okay. <laughs> let this water solidify for me. <laughs> Amen. But everybody, family, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, to another systemic racism. Rich, I thank you for bringing your uh, vast years of experience, man, um, in the, the, the marinated oil that you bring. I appreciate you for coming in and, and uh, just talking with us. Talking yeah, with thank me. you for having me. It's, a, it's always an honor and a privilege to serve the bride with you. Absolutely. And as these more seasoned YouTube and Facebook people say, if y'all get this and get something from it, like it uh, and share it and uh, that kind of stuff. <laughs> All right. But we are going to be out today. Thank y'all for tuning in. God bless to everyone. And we pray multiplication and faith in Christ Jesus name for all of you all. Till next time, we'll be back with another uh, systemic racism. Peace.